So we're loading up here, getting ready to go in on a bear. This is in Penobscot County, in a black spruce swamp, a place we'd been before. We're going after a bear named Bunny. We use names to help us remember the bear better than an ID, although they all have ID numbers unique to them. But this bear, usually we do her in this this area. Um, you can see us loading up. These are uh, dart pistols. There's no actual guns we're using. Lisa's loading up her CO2 pistol. They shoot a a dart with a dosage that's unique for this bear and uh, shoes loading up his red tail into his rifle and you can see it takes like a 22 cartridge that's what fires the dart um, so we know we're getting close but we're uh, loading up now and making the noise now before we get too close the bears are very aware of what's going on so we like to stop well before them and Get everything taken care of. So Shu is uh, loading up some drug. It looks like we're using TKX, which is Telazol, Ketamine, and Xylazine. Our boss Randy has uh, adopted this drug combination, and it works great on our bears. We know how much the bear should weigh, and we'll load up that syringe right there that I'm putting on the end of the stick. And that's uh, estimated to be enough drug to put her to sleep. That antenna Lisa is holding with the box. Each bear has a collar with its own frequency. And right now she's tuning in that frequency. And the collar submits a beep. And you see her turning the antenna. That gives us a direction of where the bear is. And it also gives us a direction on how close we are. Sounds easy, but it takes a lifetime to really figure out how to do it well. Um, so we're starting away in the woods here, and uh, Lisa's got an idea that we're getting closer. So we're passing off flashlights right now. In case the bear is in the hole, we'll have a flashlight ready so we don't have to mess around with it when we get to the bear. We have a pretty good idea this bear is not in the hole, but better to be safe than sorry. So Lisa's taking another read here. We go about 20 feet or so, take reads. She's trying to figure out how much closer we are. Every collar has a different strength. Not sure what kind of collar this bear's wearing, but... So she just said it's, we're 20 off. That hand signal, there's no talking. That tells us we're getting close. You can see me turning on my GoPro. Here's another read. Okay, that's 50 off. So now we're really getting close. And uh, if the bear's in a ground nest, we really want to be on our game now. You almost are starting to look for bedding collection and areas of structure. But as you can see, there's not a lot of structure here. It's just black spruce. In the summertime, you wouldn't even be able to walk where we are. It's all floating bog, most likely. So this is the angle that from my camera, you can see I have the pull syringe and I'm trying to stay as close as I can with Lisa. And it looks like the, I might be poking her with the stick at any moment, but I, I assure you I'm further away than that. Um, but my job is to stay as close as I can to her because she ultimately knows where the bear is. None of us know at any time, but that box is the answer. Okay, that was 60 off. Here's Shu's perspective. We all pass it back. No talking. We all pass the signal back to the other guy. Okay, so the bear is somewhere within eyesight, most likely at this point. Shu is probably going to wing out. When we get this close, the wings usually go out around and try to flank in case the bear runs. We'll have a chance of catching her. But you can see now, you can see the way Lisa's acting. She's really looking for the bear now. It's on this white snow, sometimes they show up really well. Okay, here's another read. She's checking her back signal. 
still in front of us. Now she's tuning off. A little bit of an angle change it looks like. That means we're getting close. There's Shu over there on the wing. She didn't even give us a read that time because we're just so close now. It doesn't really matter. And we're trying to keep keep it moving. The more you stand, the more the bear gets an opportunity to run. At this point in the stock, it's all about just keeping everything going. We know we're going to see the bear any time. It could run at any time. We're all very excited and trying to stay calm. When she starts walking and to getting angles, that's when you know, like, we know the bear is just in front of us. She's just looking for angle change now. Okay, you can't hear it, but Shu just saw the bear on the wing. Now she's pointing for me to go in there, and she's going to flank. And this will surprise you how close we are. Bear's right there, down in the snow. This is a classic ground nest. So now you have to inject this drug into a large muscle group. And as you can see, the bear is looking right at me. You want to hit perpendicular to where you're aiming. So hard shot here. Um, sometimes it's just a waiting game. That's really what I'm doing. You're very excited right about now, but you've got to stay calm and wait for your shot. And as she turns just a little bit, she's smelling the stick, and we used to just we just let her do it. Sometimes they bite it, sometimes they don't. Jab is good. Jab is good. So you could hear me say, jab is good. That's just me communicating with the crew that she has drug on board. And if she actually did run, they would not They would have held fire. So now it's just a waiting game, waiting for the drug to take hold of the bear. You can see her head still up just a little bit, tops of her ears peeking out at us. I'm trying to scooch down with everyone else. You can see shoes knelt down. We don't want to act as a threat to the bear. Um, no eye contact. Eye contact is not good. We're just trying to just stay out of sight and let the drug do its thing. So here we are 10 minutes later, bear's head still up. We're trained to look at certain behavior of the bear if it acts what we say drunk. This bear wasn't showing any signs of that, so the drug uh, must have been a bad injection. Shu has got another syringe loaded up with another dose. And instead of walking it over to me, you're going to see right here, it just gives it a little toss. And uh, that way, just less movement to scare the bear because she could still run at any moment. So back to my perspective, um, he's going to throw it over to me. You can see the bear. She's still right there. She's being really good. They're so tolerant of us. Sometimes. Other times they, you don't even see them and they're gone. But So here I got the stick loaded back up. And again, I'm looking for a good angle on this bear, good injection. This is a second jab in a ground nest. This doesn't happen very often. You can see she turns and I get her right there in the neck. It's a good jab. She reacted. That's a good sign that she's got the drug. So I checked my watch and it's back to 10 minute waiting game. I don't know if you guys can hear the cubs crying. Probably the snow fell down on them and it was cold. That's what that sound is. Kind of jumping ahead here, we've now removed mom from the den and you can see she has two cubs it looks like um, the folks that have arrived now are we usually have guests that we bring out with us to share the experience with they were waiting back and we went back and got them after the bear was safely asleep so now um, we're gonna work up the cubs you can see they're hanging right on to Lisa's coat and shoes coat um, and that's what we call the cub bag right there. It's got all the cub handling equipment. We've got the measuring tape, uh, pliers to tag their ears, um, and that little blue cylinder looking thing is the scale to weigh the cubs, and that all gets documented. Um, and we also have uh, that little plastic tub there. It's got it's, uh, cedar wood oil, and the reason we have that is we put it on mom's nose when we're done and we leave, so mom doesn't smell us. She'll just smell the cedar. And, uh, Here's the mate for that one. That's the lowest I've seen yet. But uh, this is very educational for a lot of folks. We take at some winners anywhere from 100 to upwards of 300 guests to sh share this experience with them and educate. You know, that's that's our biggest goal here is to educate people on what's going on in the woods every day around them. Some of these people live right in this area and 
never even know that this is going on.